Hi everybody. Uh, we are doing the uh, book of Daniel chapter 4 as a continuation from where we left it. Its chapters are different. Some they do have some connection. Uh, last time we did with the blazing furnace of the friends of Daniel. Now we are just dealing with um, King Nebuchadnezzar. And in chapter 4 is King Nebuchadnezzar dream of a tree. And um, so I, it goes whole chapter. Chapter 4 from the beginning. It's all the way from verse 1 to verse 3. Let's see, 37. All the way down here. Okay, let's go from the beginning. All right. First line, it says, King Nebuchadnezzar, comma. What I mean is a letter from the king. Addressed to who? Let me see. To the nation. He's so in all time you put um, your name, comma, because he's the king. He's like, he's giving decrees and all that. So he has to put his name first. Um, and then who's addressed to the nations and peoples of every language who live in all the earth. His message is, may you prosper greatly. It is my pleasure to tell you about the miraculous signs and wonders that the Most High God has performed for me. Now, this will be the third time God is challenging him. Okay was with the dream of the statue. Then second, he's making the statue himself and makes everybody down and is acknowledged God of um, three friends of Daniel, you know. So that was the second one. And this is the third time, okay. Um, verse three, how great are his signs, how mighty his wonders. His kingdom is an eternal kingdom. His dominion endures from generation to generation. Now he says the story. How? So that was the pretty much like introduction. What is, you know, is um, acknowledging God. Now it's like how he starts. Verse 4. I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at home in my palace, contented and prosperous. He's like, he says like, always he says like how much he had. Contented like, happy um you know nothing bothered him he had all what he wanted he says contented and prosperous like he had lots of um wealth okay prosperous always will come in he's a king of course he has right i never heard the uh, people saying it was a poor king really because <laughs> the king always take taxes from a um, um, the poor and bring it to the kingdom they always had and always will have you know verse 5 I had a dream that made me afraid alright so when God gives us dreams and re reveals something for the future he didn't know what the dream was it was not yet revealed to him what was the dream all about he knew he had a dream and even though was, you know, the dream, nothing shows about him, nothing, you know, like a specific with his body, nothing. He was afraid. Okay. So he has a sense of fear that something is not going to be right. Is the spirit of the Lord sometimes challenge us like that. When you are, have a dream and you're afraid, there's something God tried to tell you. As I was lying, let's keep going. As I was lying in bed, the images and visions that passed through my mind terrified me. Okay. So I say it was a spirit that was sent by God that to know, to know that there is something is going to happen if it doesn't change. So I commanded that all the wise men of Babylon be brought before me to interpret the dream for me. When the magicians, you see, he's, he's living through those people magician what magician will do hocus pocus you know um, things like that enchanters astrologers diviners 
it's like it's witchcraft and all that they were you know came uh i told them the dream but they could not interpret it for me finally daniel is the only one finally verse 8 daniel came into my presence and i told him the dream he is called belshazzar after the name of my god oh well how sad is uh daniel to live like that in there you know and not just that have to be called like a, his pagan god and the spirit of the holy gods is in him which he's like holy gods like he thinks like one of the gods he doesn't know which one he's still not he, he was in doubt okay when he um he has two challenges but he still didn't didn't know who god was which is pretty sad all right verse 9 i said belshazzar which is daniel chief of the magicians wow i would be sad just to be called the chief of magicians <laughs> i feel sorry already for him but god wanted him in that position for a reason okay i know that the spirit of the holy gods is in you and no mystery is too difficult for you so he knows that there's something more in daniel than in any other people he's he's known uh, so far here is my dream interpreted for me verse 10 there are the visions i saw these are the visions i saw um while lying in bed i look and there before me stood a tree in the middle of the land its height was enormous the tree grew large and strong and what it says its top touched the sky it's how big that tree was it was visible to the end of the earth verse 12 its leaves were beautiful its uh, fruit abundant and on it was food for all he said he was prosperous like he was like so like very very rich uh king um under it the wild look at that even under it so it's not just the leaves the fruits beautiful under it and even under the tree the wild animals found shelter and the birds live in on in its branches from it every creature was fed he had so much could feed even the wild like people coming from other places and all that you know like i'm just saying like um um for um like wild animals you know what it must doesn't doesn't uh is that um cats and dogs they're not wild animals if you will dream with that is like the one around the house but wild animals coming from uh, f far out okay um from different countries or different uh, nations and even those who are fed right all right 13 in the visions i saw while laying in bed so it was a vision he said dream now it says vision in the visions I saw while lying in bed, I looked and there before me was a holy one, a messenger, and I say it was an angel of the Lord. Um, a messenger is also um, like a watchman, a, a translation, a watchman, but um, I would say it was the angels of the Lord. Uh, coming down from heaven so he saw it where it came okay so they know now there's no doubt to know that the message came from heaven okay um he called it he called in a loud voice like there will be no doubt um he would not hear it cut down the tree and trim off its branches strip off its leaves and scatter its fruits its fruit let the animal flee from under it and the birds from its branches but 
look in the in verse 15 but let the stamp and its roots bound with iron and bronze remain in the ground in the grass of the field let's pause just for a minute does it say is the uh, the stamp and its roots bound with iron and bronze remember that uh, in the statue that uh, uh, he had the, the dream with about the statue uh, the feet wore iron and bronze like a towards the end then iron and clay um, but it goes like with uh, like gold silver and all that you know so towards the end so it shows that they are like very strong and let it remain in the ground in the grass of the field okay and verse keep going with verse 15 let him be drenched with the dew of heaven what is dew of heaven it says in the morning even though it's hot that day and you know it's going to be maybe 90 degrees 100 degrees always in the morning god gives the dew um this is on morning but then it says here dew of heaven um it's like a not like a rain but wet all over the place when you come in the morning it's wet on the grass everywhere so the plants they have it if they don't have no water throughout the day they have a little bit of that like they, they give and, and here they call it the dew of heaven wow and let him live with the animals among the plants of the earth verse 16 let his mind be changed from that of a man and let him be given the mind of an animal till seven times pass by for him um, 17 the decision is announced by messengers the holy one declares the verdict so that the living may know that most high is sovereign over all kingdoms on earth and gives them to anyone he wishes and sets over them the lowliness of people so this this dream was given it has to to challenge the the king because already had two challenges he still didn't he follow his own uh, pagan gods altars and all that and god wanted him to have a change and they give him this this dream was uh, a turnaround point why when i was reading um, this today uh when i was reading like number four popped in my head um it's more like in the spirit like um uh, for what four you know stands is is a number and then we are in 2024 right now and number four it stands out um it is an open door if you want to take it this is your chance my friend um, I say my friends um, this is your chance God is talking to you through this chapter specific um, if you want to take it or not this dream probably is you as well so let's go from the interpretation so if you did not turn to God this is your chance God is giving you maybe the last chance okay and it, that was the the message i got when i like that number four keep keep uh, showing the spirit i see it um that is for to, this year the open door if you want to take it um make sure it's not too late daniel interprets the dream okay so verse 19 then daniel also called beshazzar was greatly perplexed for a time because he knew exactly what the dream meant and his thoughts terrified him as well as it was the king when he was scared afraid terrified and all that and um didn't know what to say what to do but um so the king said Belshazzar do not let the dream or its meaning alarm you Belshazzar answered my lord if only the dream applied to your enemies uh, and its meaning to your adversaries because you know he knew how bad could get the tree you saw which 
grew large and he says uh, all the dreams that he, he was. Um, he's saying exactly the dream um, that actually the king told him. Um, he's saying that um, in verse 22, you, your majesty, you are the that dream. Okay, wow. All right, so he had the kingdom. Babylonians were like great, especially at that time. He had like, um, and it says here, uh, you have become great and strong because this was the trees was touching the sky. It's how great he was. Your greatness has shown, has grown until it reaches the sky and your dominion extends to distant parts of the earth. Like far away on the earth, like left, right, you know, north, south, east, and west, his dominion, like he has so, so much power that he became like a great, big, big tree. And of course, the messenger of God came down and he says, cut it and go and destroy it. And then um, he says the interpretation. This is the interpretation, your majesty, and, and this is the decree the Most High has issued against my Lord, the King. You'll be driven away from people and will live with the, the wild animals. You will eat grass like the ox and be drenched with the dew of heaven. Seven times, which seven times means seven years, the, the translation gives us, seven times means seven years will pass by for you until you acknowledge that the Most High is sovereign over all kingdoms on earth and gives them to anyone he wishes. Okay. So, seven times, seven years. Wow. The think if the person gets, uh, they lose their mind, you know, and gets like an animal mind, it's hard from that state to come back. Think about, um, you know, people, they have all kinds of mental, you know, issues. Um, it's hard for them, you see on the streets, you know, um, it's hard for them to come back um, in their state mind, in the, in the right mind. Um, verse 26, the command to leave the stamp of the tree with its roots means that your kingdom will be restored to you when you acknowledge that heaven's rules Heaven's rule, not the king rules, you know, like uh, Nebuchadnezzar, okay? The heaven rules, not the, uh, the Babylonian king. Therefore, your majesty, so he's giving him um, the choice that he has. He's giving him an advice, and Daniel has given you, it will be around here, he will be giving you good, good advices, believe it or not. Therefore, Your Majesty, be pleased to accept my advice. Renounce your sins by doing what is right and your wickedness by being kind to the oppressed. It may be that when your prosperity will continue. Um, now, let's see what the king will do. All this happened to King Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, verse 20, 12 months later. So it gave him, you see, God is always uh, sovereign. God, great, almighty. Wow. Why? He gave the king 12 months, 12 months, whole year to come around. He's watching him and see if he will come around in 12 months. Two months is a long, that's the thing. Yeah, okay, one month, two months, three months the most, that's it. You turn around or not, I'm taking your kingdom away. No, 12 months later, and God is, was still waiting for him to make the step. King Nebuchadnezzar needed to do it. God was waiting on him to do it. Two months later, as the king was walking on the roof, of the royal palace of Babylon. Said, it is not this great Babylon I have built as your residence. 
by my mighty power and for the glory of my majesty. Oh, wow. All right. He, that's a sentence right there. I can see it. So whenever was given was a warning through the dream um, to come back to the real God. And he already experienced it twice. And then he had a warning the third time. But then the pride puffed up in him. Um, look at the greater, the great, um, he see it, yes. But you, even though you have, it's nothing wrong to have, guys. God doesn't say that. It's nothing wrong to have. God wants us to be prosperous. God wants us to have like that much, the whole kingdom, you know. He wants us to have. It's nothing wrong. But humble yourself and give praise to God who gave it to you. But the king of Babylon, what did he, what did he say? I have built, he built that royal residence by my mighty power. He So he's called himself mighty. And for the glory of, of my majesty, like of his, he has glory and his majesty, of his majesty, it was built and he has it because of him, not because of the real God. That's all what God wanted, to see where he stands. And if you have that much of the pride and do not acknowledge God in your life, I will say today, repent. Get bow down and acknowledge who God is and give him glory for what you have, job, wealth, um, happiness, happy family. Uh, I don't know what you have or you don't, but I would say this is your time to bow down and this is the year God will open new doors, big doors for you, for your destiny, for your family, for your friends, your loved ones. But you have to bow down, not just you, bring the other ones to salvation. Tell who God is. But I said, this is, he, he makes, he's already signing his sentence. Right now, the king of Babylon, um, as we can see, he is like puff himself in pride. God doesn't stay with pride people. I'm not sure if you knew that, but God doesn't like pride people. Why? Because Lucifer was, um, his pride went so high up, then he has to be thrown down because he says, I'm going to be like the most high God. You know? And then exactly what we see here, he just say he, he is the one that he did all that. He doesn't acknowledge that there is a God who actually um, helped him have all that. Um, 31. Now, God puts king and God takes them down. As we know, he has the power. Everything is in his hands. 31. Even as the words were on his lips, he didn't even finish. When he finished the last saying majesty, that's it. Because why? God already knew it from his thoughts. Even though there was war on his lips, a voice came from heaven because they were waiting. Everybody was waiting for one year to see what he turns around or not. And um, it could give him more time, but he already made a decision that he, he is the one who is the God that made everything to happen. Um, so a voice came from heaven. This is what is decreed for you, King Nebuchadnezzar. Your royal authority has been taken from you, you'll be driven away from people and will live with the wild animals. You will eat grass like the ox. Wow, that's a very harsh thing. Um, seven times with seven years will pass for you until you acknowledge that the Most High is sovereign over all kingdoms on earth and gives them to anyone he wishes. Wow. I said that was very harsh sentence. So the sentence came down. It was a warning first, 
but then it waited and then it became the, the real part. Um, immediately what has been said about Nebuchadnezzar was fulfilled. He was driven away from people and ate grass like the ox. His body was drenched with the dew of heaven until his hair grew like the feathers of an eagle and his nails like the claws of a bird. Um, that portrays <laughs> it's the because the hair grew like nobody could touch him to um, cut his hair and nails and they they grow so like uh, feathers of the eagles like very very long it's portrayed like very long and maybe gray hair long and uncombed and nails like claws of a bird if you leave the nails to grow they do tend to be like claws i've seen it people they don't want to cut their nails uh, i've seen it very very long strong and they they get uh, like a claw they go towards uh, turns inside um and they look very scary <laughs> i've seen it i don't <laughs> i don't know what to do but um i just respect people what they want to have and not have so i <laughs> There yeah, may no comments on that, but when I look at this uh, gentleman's nails, like I was a little bit um, scared just to see them. So you look like a scary creature, okay? He had the dew of the of the heaven. Had grass. He lost his mind. He ran away. They couldn't get him back. Is the way I see it. His mind was like an animal. He didn't know who he was anymore. Um, and um, he was driven away from people. So they make him probably they make him go away or he ran away because he lost his mind. People cannot keep him. He ran and got in the, um, I would say nature where animals, wild animals were and uh, ate from the ground and um, I'm not sure if he act as an animal or not but I says he looked like a, after a while he looked like very scary and people just try to stay away from him from him wow that was a bad sentence guys but this was the third time God tried to reach his heart and he is not wasn't wasn't what God wanted him to do so think about that wow 34 at the end of that time i nebuchadnezzar so he's writing all these he's writing all these it's like a letter that everybody behind him he know he will know what happened raise my eyes towards toward heaven all of a sudden after seven years passed his sentence was fulfilled is not not locked down in jail or like a, a prison or whenever he was <laughs> locked in the nature he lost his mind his mind was taken away it was the mind of the animals he, so he couldn't process who he was anymore and god can do those things god can give god can take away as well rest his eyes towards heaven um Rise my eyes towards heaven. Sorry, <laughs> I'm so used to it for myself. Right, raise my eyes. So I and book so raise my eyes towards heaven as an animal kind of type creature. And my as soon as he lifted his head up, my sanity was restored. So in other words, he was insane. Okay, he says it. My sanity was restored. Um, then, I, then I praise the Most High. Uh, I honor and glorify Him who lives forever. So he acknowledged who God was. Finally, as his uh, his uh, brain came back restored to his, you know, got restored to his own mind. Then he realized that that happened. 
what happened to him and start praising the most high God, honor and glorify him who lives forever. So he, so we'll think about uh, King Nebuchadnezzar writes this and he says his dominion is an eternal dominion. His kingdom endures from generation to generation. All the peoples of the earth are regarded as nothing. He does and he pleases with the powers of heaven um, and the people of the earth. No one can hold back his hand or say to him, where have you done? What have you done? Um, I'm not sure it's a little blurred this. Uh, all right. So he realized what happened and um, all his mind got restored. At the same time that my sanity, as he says, was restored, my honor and splendor were returned to me for the glory of my kingdom. God didn't want to take his kingdom, you know, just just to take him. He want to see who God is and needs to be praised. God needs to be praised, not him, not for his, because he doesn't have glory and might, you know. He's just a person. He was placed as a king. He born as a king, but he's still a person. God is to be uh, give the glory. Um, I'm not sure what happened in seven years. They were waiting for him, him to come to his senses. Um, my advisors and nobles sought me out and I was restored to my throne and became even greater than before. So whenever he came back to his senses, everything was restored to back to him, all the kingdom and everything else. And he was greater than before. Now, because he knows God is different. Verse 27. Um, I, Nebuchadnezzar, um, praise and exalt and glorify the King of heaven because everything he does is right and all his ways are just look at the last one and those who walk in pride he's able to humble because exactly what he was he walked in pride who he was like oh i did this you see i did this i'm the god i'm i did all this this empire i like all it's like an octopus is spread, like it's like dominion for so on so many um, places on earth. He, he, he was great. But remember what it says here that um, his throne was restored and he became greater than before. As I told you guys, God doesn't want to take his um, kingdom away and... Um, provision and everything what he had he want to teach him a lesson he want to know who actually real God is and as he learned he restored everything to him and give him more and he says that um, the ones are in pride walk in pride he's able to humble them and exactly what was his lessons to from the pride um, to humble the king of Babylon and I think it says, it's given by revelation, guys, um, what happened since Daniel came in Babylon. Uh, he started to pray for the king. And I can say daily, but he prayed for the king that he will uh, know the real God. And he cared. Daniel cared for the king. If we pray for people, we do care for those people, even though they are not our family and all that, you know. And he knew who the king was and how, what he was doing, how wicked he says, like, uh, make sure that uh, God will not, like, uh, you will turn from your wicked way, be righteous um, to the oppressed. Um, so he knew who the king was, but as God loves us, even though in our wickedness, um, it's how Daniel um, loved the king. They wanted him to be restored. He wanted him to be restored to God. And he prayed for him. As he started praying for him, 
all these things happen, God is giving him um, moments that he can turn to him to know who he is, uh, who is the real God. And he fell twice. He turned, but then he fell back because all the Babylon was serving. Um, he had altars for different gods. Um, now, this time, for real, he turned around with no doubts because he wrote this letter and um, got allowed to be placed in the Bible that we, we learn, we learn from it. All right, I hope you learned something. Then I says the last one is says a lot and God can turn the one with pride, can humble them. He has his own way. Don't wait till that comes around. I would say humble right now and uh, acknowledge who God is. He loves you and he wants uh, you to spend eternal life with him. All right, guys, this concludes uh, the lesson, uh, chapter four. I enjoy it very much. I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. Till next time I say you goodbye. Goodbye now.